this presentation has been a long time in coming, you could say. How many of you know what ABB is or who we are? The joke in ABB is that you don't call ABB if you need a light switch or a plug. You call ABB if you have a small country that you need wired for electricity. That's, uh, in the nutshell, pretty much what we do. We have five different divisions. We're approximately, well, 30 plus billion dollar company. Uh, about 110, 120,000 employees. We have five divisions. We're a market leader in many, many different areas. In fact, some of our products, we are the market leader with over 90% of the global market. And some of them, we're a little bit less. Now, why is quality and operational excellence so critical to us? And as all of your customers are doing, they're asking for more and more for less and less. Now, ABB itself, of course, we're a public company. We recognize that we have a cost of poor quality, so of course we're trying to reduce this through various initiatives, but also we want to be on the red curve, which is really why we are applying TOC in many places. But, uh, we need to improve supplier performance, and therefore we help suppliers a lot using TOC and quality techniques. And the competitors, of course, also have their own aggressive operational excellence programs. Now, this slide I could spend the rest of the presentation on. Basically, it's an evolution, how we've actually worked with TOC, or I think I would rather call it flow principles now. Starting in 88, we studied and studied and studied, and we also know about TOC. And so finally, we actually had our first DBR implementation up in Finland in 93. And as we're going on here, we are actually implementing the various TOC and in more and more plants. Uh, in 2001, Ellie visited us the first time, and uh, in this case, it was for a, uh, a necessary but not sufficient type of implementation in our Helsinki factory. Ellie also visited us again in 2003. Uh, he was actually speaking with an entire division, and at that time, unfortunately, ABB was in very rough financial conditions. The company almost went bust. In 2003, uh, we developed what we call the CP3 program, and uh, this was well, we have the tools, but how are we going to apply them in a systematic way, even though we have the uh, five focusing steps? Well, we needed a way to make projects around it. In 2003, we also had the Operational Excellence Program start within one of the divisions where we teach a lot, a lot of different lean techniques, a lot of the TOC techniques, a lot of quality techniques in, in fairly large groups uh, to people who are picked as the future operations managers and uh, production managers, supply chain managers, quality managers, things like this. This program has been going on for quite some time and is extremely successful in terms of an education. I could fill this room with just the people who have learned TOC through that. 2004, we had our first critical chain implementation, and uh, I think we actually had two in that year. And, and uh, 2005, we did the distribution solution. And in 2005, the executive level now is focusing on, amongst other things, operational excellence. So we have a member on the board who is uh, connected with us who brings the issues of operational excellence to that level. 2006. <clears throat> At this point, the, ma the manufacturing technologies R&D program was mature enough to become a product. If you think about the funnel of development, you have things in R&D, you work on them, they get stable, now it's a product, now I can make money on it. So basically, we were converted over to the operations development group. We are outside of corporate research, we don't get funding from them anymore. We get funding from a different source. 50 consultants in four centers around the world. 2007 is when we did the SDBR and SAP, which Vukash will talk a little bit about. In 2007, we, in, we opened up the operational excellence program from just the operations and quality and supply chain to IS. So in other words, the uh, software people who are helping us with SAP and things like that were now becoming educated in all these other principles, especially TOC. 2008, well this year, we had our first implementation of the uh, dynamic buffer management in SAP. 2008, we now have the operational excellence program for controllers, teaching them about critical chain. It opens their eyes. And this is why the projects are, this is why they're so expensive. Now, by this year, we have 100 people trained in what we call advanced TOC. Advanced TOC teaches, and I'll show you on a slide in a little bit, it's almost like your Jonah course was uh, back in 99. If we look at how we were thinking in the 90s, it was process thinking plus lean thinking. If we look at how we were thinking in this decade, it's TOC focusing process and lean thinking, and we're starting to be on the red curve. So <clears throat> what also we discovered was that within our group of operational excellence, we were noticing we were having high turnover. We'd get people in, we would, they would work for a few years, and then they would leave. And we're thinking, well, we want to keep these people. But we noticed that they're leaving to the ABB companies, and they're becoming operations managers. They're becoming supply chain managers. And so we then said, maybe this isn't really a consulting company. Maybe it's a university. And what we will be doing in the future is making sure that people can come in from ABB 
learn how to do all these things as consultants, go out into the businesses, do projects, improve things. And then they will become more well known and connected, of course. They will also be exposed to a lot of different companies. Remember, we're, we're talking about over 250 companies with an ABB. So it is quite possible that person from one division, he came from a division, will be actually working for another division. We're going to be structuring this group so that people can come in, learn quickly, and then within maybe two years, go out into the business and become an operations manager. This is most of the people that we have within the, uh, the operations development group. We have in Finland a group, we have a few people in Zurich, we have in Bengaluru in India a group, we have in Beijing, and one in Raleigh, North Carolina in the States here. We also have a mission and vision, and this helps us focus so that if we read the mission together with the ABB businesses and stakeholders, continuously improve ABB's performance and competitiveness. Additionally, support developing operational excellence competencies across ABB. So the first line is consulting. The second line is education and job transfer. The vision for ABB as a whole is that ABB is the benchmark in quality and operational excellence in our industry. Operational excellence program. Like I was describing, we have classroom training. They do projects within their own companies. And this particular example is a DBR application and transformer factory. We are hosted usually by a local company. And uh, we do benchmarking within their own company. We also do benchmarking for companies in the local area of that, of that hosting company, um, just to get a totally different perspective. And then finally, we have a lot of fun. And we witness the local culture. We have theory of constraints, where we have uh, the five focusing steps. We use the two primary areas of the five focusing steps in the thinking process. And then we have lean. Lean creates a streamlined flow of orders pulled through the value stream by reducing the eight wastes. We include the unused employee creativity as a form of waste. Now we have a combination of TOC, and this is things like TLS have been talked about quite a bit. What, what we do is to identify the constraint, we use value stream mapping if it's not clear. Exploiting the constraint, of course, removing the waste, TPM, setup, that kind of stuff. And then subordination, is, at least in our minds, is to make sure that you have a smooth flow. Don't waste the constraint. So this is our training, for example, what we would include in our advanced TOC. We also have training in Lean, and we also have Six Sigma, and a thing we call 4Q, which is kind of like the uh, A3, if you've heard of this from Lean. So we have a good toolbox, and we've had some good results in a few factories, but we needed a process. So we have the toolbox, but because we were at the time a research organization, we said, well, let's put together a process for improving factories, similar to a process for developing new product. And we came up with the CP3 process. Now, what it is, is an on-site assessment to begin with, a gated uh, development, which has specific checklists within each of the gates. So you have to analyze the situation, use a lot of the uh, thinking process tools here, plan what you're going to do to improve it. Basically, you would have figured out what your injections are by here. Development really need, means build the solution, because an injection is something that changes the reality. You have to build something in order to change that, change the way the system is working. And you pilot it in a small place, and then you expand it out into the factory. And then we hand it over. Uh, in other words, the uh, consultants, the uh, ODG consultants, will then come out. But the project is still running within the factory until gate six, where it's closed and finally verify the results. The quickest, the plant assessment, we use by stream map, as I say, we identify the constraint, we find initial root causes, we do a lot of simulation games to get the buy-in, this helps quite a bit, and then we have some decisions on the next steps. This is an example of a value stream map uh, with these two things as the possible constraints depending on what the product is. Uh, one of the uh, simulation games we have is called Samba. Now, it is a, a game for late customization. Uh, we build the little cars out of uh, Legos, and this is great fun. We do it in three rounds. The first round is we give them a, a way to do the manufacturing, which is not that optimal, and they have some, a lot of trouble. The second round is we teach them principles of lean and TLC, and they try to implement it. They get a little better. And then in the third round, we would <coughs> actually help them a lot to create a really good pull system. Basically, this is what we do but in the analysis phase, the tools we use. Notice there's a lot of things from the thinking process. In the planning phase, build the pilot solution. In some factories, we have many lines, so therefore we can do it in different lines. But in some factories, we have one. So basically, we have to pilot it on the line. Go live, monitor it, fix it, and full implementation, you roll it out. Um, in the sustain phase, we, we verify that the PUGI is in place and working. 
basically, if I go back to back into the implementation side, we will not leave the project until it is stable. But uh, if we look at gate six here, closed project passed when the solution has demonstrated that it is robust to uncertainty. Now, here's the results. This is what you've been waiting for. Before I go into this list, I just want to say that I was looking at a gate documentation for a project that's going on now where they developed a solution using supermarkets. And if we talk about build to availability, build to availability of this company is at 17 days. Put an order in, I can give it to you in 17 days. After this will be implemented, the supermarket system, it will be six minutes. Now I said, this is typo. How can it be six minutes? I can't even walk in a warehouse and get it in six minutes. So the thing is that we're working towards reducing inventory and making the order to delivery time very fast. Now this is an example of many different companies. I haven't given names. But if you look at the capacity increase, 100% on the first one, throughput time cut in half, on-time delivery to 100. Next one, on-time delivery to 100, throughput time minus 70. We have some outrageous ones here. For example, this one, capacity increased by 260%. Okay, delivery time minus 60, on-time delivery to 100. Again and again and again, more good numbers. I just picked out two in particular. Power transformers, these are huge things. This is a power transformer used in what we call high voltage DC, which is where we transport, transport uh, electricity over vast distances. Now there's a person standing here. These are built in, in the factory number two here. Now I said the capacity was increased by 20%, big deal. But when we came to the factory, it was already the largest factory in the world in terms of capacity. We also reduced the throughput time to record low. They could put one of these things together in 35 days. This other factory here, the capacity was increased 100%. We doubled it. They were even thinking about expansion, we canceled it. On-time delivery, 100%, reduce the throughput time. Another thing I haven't shown in this case is that we have to test every transformer. And if there's something wrong with it, you have to take it apart. Imagine taking that apart. They had, at this other factory, the, because they had so much work in progress, they were making mistakes, quality problems, blah, 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 zero test failures. And it went from, at this, at this factory, it was increased uh, yeah, 100%. So these things work when you reduce the whip, for sure. We did the ROI of these, of some, some 20 projects, these plus some other ones. Now the average project duration is 16.6 months. This is huge. We need, this is something we really need to work on. The average project three year net present value, $14 million per project. The average project total cost, including investments, half million. Most of that may be because it's 16 months. So the average project payback period is less than three months. What can you conclude from this? It can be said that these projects pay for themselves long before they're finished. We should do more. <laughs> in one product group, which is spread around the world, I have this little score sheet thing here. It's kind of like a hockey game or a football game, you know, push versus pull. And over the years we've been working, uh, we've managed to get 28 pull applications or flow-based applications versus 19 push applications. What do I mean by push? It's MRP, it's project management, straight project management, not, not critical chain, or what we call XL Hell. XL Hell is where you have Excel sheets all over the factory. People have their own local schedules, you know, and they don't talk to each other. So we're winning on that one, for sure. Towards operational excellence, the signs. Now, job rotation within our group is now seen as a good career stepping stone. That's one thing. Structured operational excellence programs are becoming stronger. Throughput accounting principles are using in the expense process. We'll focus on waste elimination as well as process efficiency. And the final one here, speed is understood as equal to technology and service as an element of unfair competitive advantage. I think you call it decisive competitive edge. Now what are these pictures all about? The thing is you start to walk through factories all around ABB and you start to see indications of it. One, one thing I saw was this clock. This clock is actually wrong. The time I took the picture was 12.17. It says it's uh, five minutes to 12. And there's a light attached to it. That clock says how many minutes in the shift has the constraint been down. This chart is actually more powerful. This is what they look at in Zurich for this particular product group. It shows the location of the, cons the primary constraint and the, the one that will happen next if we elevate it, given process step, factories around the world for the same type of product. This is the expected increase if they elevate the first constraint. If somebody comes to them and says, I need $10 million for a new, uh, a new press or a new winder, the first question they will get is, is it your constraint? And if they say no, they are turned away. Future, still got a lot of operational units to go. We're working on the sales process now because some places we've elevated the internal constraint, the, the constraints in the market. Large projects areas we need to work on more, supplier integration more, 
R&D process. We have it in some places, but not all. And mergers and acquisitions. ABB has cash. We're on a buying spree. But the thing is, we want to buy companies that will be good, so we can apply TOC in, in looking at those. Good morning. I'd like to share with you how we in ABB join together TOC and, and, and SAP. To my goal, in, uh, as, as, as maybe Alan mentioned earlier, that uh, in ABB there is an initiative of one, one simple ABB having in all factories, in all activities, SAP installed and run um, all activities using this one. And group of my team was how to um, e enable SAP with TOC. Because we can either go you know, with SAP and then fix the potential damages that are you know, not in line with what we do in TOC, or we try to SAP do, do what we want. Uh, first, I'd like to, to thank to Alan Barnard and Eli Schragenheim, okay, to these guys who have uh, guided us through the process of doing SAP better too. And these were the typical business problems that, that we have met in our factories and that we wanted to, to somehow deal with. So the problem starting from sales support, how can I be reliable, uh, give the customer the best date that I can give, sell, sell something to him. Another one, we want to have constraint in the market. This is our goal. But sometimes it happens that the constraint is in manufacturing. How to squeeze as much as possible from it. Next point is, if very often in our factories we are in engineer to order. So, and engineers need to know when to finish their job. They want us to go as late as possible, but they need to go when to finish. Another po point, every year there comes new targets, reduce inventory, increase OTD. Just how to achieve this. Okay, here we can, I have enlisted uh, which tools of TOC we have used in, in SAP. You can see that for sales support, we have used this planned load concept from, from simplified RAM buffer rope. For constraint scheduling, we have used typical tool from, from SAP like capacity requirements planning. It happened that we can do engineering support without going into very expensive packages like project systems. We can do it in, in standard SAP, in standard R3 version. Dynamic stock buffer management for inventory and buffer management and conwip for execution. Planned load concept, we want to answer to our customer was the earliest possible date for him. So he, we treat either the constraint internally in the factory or we treat whole factory as a constraint and we calculate how much we are loaded. These orange bars show how much we are loaded in, in the coming time. What is our backlog? What it means to us, it means that at the end of this planned load that we call end of planned load is a place that we can place a new order from our customer. So we place a new order here. And also going further, as you know, from simplified RAM buffer rope to know when to give it to customer and when to start it we can judge it by, by a simple rule like 50% of production buffer. This way we have release point and, and finish point. Okay, so this was, this was one of the tools implemented in SAP. If we go to another one, it's the typical situation after running MRP. After running MRP, we have materials planned, but what happens, we have over overload in some area. MRP is not caring about resources. But it happens that there is also another tool in, in SAP called capacity requirements planning, that it is quite well positioned for drum buffer rope situation. If you have one constraint in your factory, one constraint in your environment, you can use this. You can say, this one is my constraint. Please do the schedule for this one and leverage all the rest and, and adjust all the rest to this one. So this is the situation after, after running this tool. We have implemented also dynamic stock buffer management. Very simple reports with a very big power and uh, showing in which materials, in which stocks we should go down, in which we should go up. Single prioritization system, you know, it's one of the most important issues in, in, in running production to have one prioritization system here. On, it is based on, on simple buffer management. Summarizing all of this, what I was talking about, it was possible to do in SAP, either using standard SAP tools by customizing this or creating very simple reports for this. Thank you very much.